Hello. Hi, is this Tina? It is. All right. Well, let me do the official introduction, ladies and gentlemen. We are very excited and honored to welcome our featured guest for this evening. She is a singer and an actress and comes from a long legacy of musicians. Uh, We are very excited to welcome the one and only, you know her as Katie Douglas, of course, Miss Tina (laughs) Cole to the show. You're on the air with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome, Tina. Well, thank you very much. It is a pleasure. I want to talk about what an American sweetheart you are. And you couldn't fulfill my Whoa. fantasies anymore by <clears throat> having me hear that you're actually making cookies for, for your grandchildren. Kids. <laughs> wow. <laughs> First of all, I can't believe oh, your yeah. grandmother. Not only are you a grandmother, but you're making cookies. You're the whole thing, man. I mean, you're the perfect I am, grandmother. My golly. I'm the real thing, the real deal. <laughs> there you go. Well, how you doing, Tina? It's so great to have you on the show. Wow, I love you so much. Oh, thank you. It is, I'm doing fine. I'm just, you know, bored with mm-hmm. this the whole last year. Right. Um, I had a, a, a wonderful little gig in Salina, Kansas. Mm. Um, I've never been to Salina, although I remember when I was, I must have been like 16, and the movie Picnic came out. Mm-hmm. With uh, you know, uh, Kim Novak and William Holden, where they couldn't dance, but I didn't care. I wanted to be Kim Novak, <laughs> and I guess they filmed it in Salina, right in the very pavilion we're going to be in. It's the 40th anniversary of one of the largest classic car shows wow. in the country. Wow! And it's at the end of I think the 20 whatever that weekend, the 24th or something like that of July. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's 25 acres and um, 2,000 classic cars. Wow. That's it's incredible. huge. And, I'm the, and so I'm the classic celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, what about that? I mean, what does that do to your head? All of a sudden, you're like a classic car. You're like the classic. <laughs> hey, really? <clears throat> Listen, the first car I ever bought for myself was a 1960. Fire engine red Corvette convertible. Wow. Yeah, I what I would give to have that car today. So, I, I have really loved classic cars, <laughs> and I, you know, I'm kind of that circa. So you know, it works. Right, right. So, so at least that's one gig that you know it. It uh, we had to cancel it last year, a week before the show because of COVID, yeah. and so it's opened up again. So I'll be there, you know, signing autographs and meeting people and probably taking my picture with the cars, right? whatever they want. And fulfilling every young guy's fantasy to be next to you. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, but it's been, you know, how many years? 50 years? <laughs> Hopefully they, they're looking at me through old eyes. <laughs> no, you look beautiful, Tina. I mean, you haven't aged at all. I mean, you're gorgeous. Oh, uh, thank you. Good good pioneer stock i hope <laughs> no, we we heard from another radio host and he was like i'm so excited about your show this weekend it's going to be amazing i said yeah i really love tina he goes doesn't everybody <laughs> oh that is so sweet <laughs> that is yeah, they, yeah katie was uh katie was one of those she had as many <laughs> she see how i use that right mm-hmm. she had as, as many fans uh, females as males which is amazing Right, right. Well, uh, even in the business, uh, we had somebody on the show, and I'll tell you who that is in a minute. And she talked to me about how much she loved you, and made it easy uh, oh. for her as a kid. And that's Miss Dawn Lynn. Oh, did you, it, she is just the sweetest person in the world. She is. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Now, yeah, I adore her. Of course, we're going to talk about my three sons, but. And a lot of interviews that I've seen you in, uh, what people don't talk a lot about is, of course, they talk about the King sisters, your mom, Yvonne King. But I want to talk about Uh your dad, too, uh, Buddy Cole. Uh, Talk to us a little bit about growing up. I mean, here you're growing up in this family with your dad, who's this (laughs) amazing musician, and your mom, who's this amazing singer. I mean, what was your household like as a kid? Uh It was, of course, I didn't know any different, mm-hmm. and that's the thing, you know, when, you, when you're living it, you don't know that everybody's household isn't like this, so, um, but we had a, a, a music room that was built in the backyard 
Wait, I'm taking cookies out. It's okay. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, hang on. I had to close up the oven. <laughs> the timer went off. All right, done. Um, and my dad, this is, so this is, mm, you know, probably mid to late 40s, early 50s. Um, we, he had, it was a, <laughs> it had a full bar. Mm-hmm. I mean, the professional bar with all the, you know, the glasses, the mirror, the games, the everything. Mm-hmm. My love, my dad loved to entertain behind that bar. It had his grand piano. It had his uh, 1,200 pipe uh, three-tier c- console organ. Wow. Uh, a full recording booth, couches going around the room. I mean, it was really something. And wow. he did all of the radio shows at the time. Uh, like Trevor McGee and Molly and, you know, The Shadow and all those things. Red Rider, what are all those shows? And we would listen as little little kids would bundle up after our baths and would sit in front of the console radio and listen to our dad play for these shows. He also played for um, the game shows. Uh, he played live on the show like all of them... Um, uh, uh, this is your life and mm-hmm. right. consequences sure. and all of those shows and he would play live well after, and then they would do they did most a lot of record dates at night and people would come over after the gigs and they would hang out they would play they would record i think we've got a, a recording of my mom tried to figure out where it was, how to find it of art tatum one of the you know, who was just, he was, well, my dad idolized him. Mm-hmm. Um, playing, you know, he recorded him just playing the, the play, piano, just, you know, hanging out. I mean, big movie stars and and recording people and television people. It was, it was a small pond in those days, too. And uh, I remember um, uh, Hoagy Carmichael. Oh, yeah. Would, would, uh, come in at like four in the morning <laughs> drunk in the skunk <laughs> and he'd wrap me up in my blanket and he would bring me out and sit me on the piano bench next to him and say all right i'm not gonna publish this next song unless you tell me if you like it oh and it was like stardust or you know i mean some like classic right <laughs> right know, song and i don't know yes I, I can say this on radio i just think it's pretty funny I mean, they would, you know, they would, as I say, it was a full bar, so they were all off work, and they'd get pretty lit. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I guess Hopi was hogging the piano. I wasn't there. This is, <laughs> so this is hearsay. I love this story. Um, yeah, but uh, he he would not get off the piano. Oh. And my dad was, you know, kept trying to get him off. He wouldn't get off. Okay, I'm going <laughs> to, my dad Oh, this is so bad. He <laughs> unzipped his fly. He opened up Hoagie's pocket and peed in it. Oh, really? <laughs> to get him off the piano. Wow. <laughs> now, I haven't told that story, let me tell you, many places. I appreciate um, that. Thank you. <laughs> one morning, about two in the morning, I guess, uh, pretty late, uh, the phone rang and my dad answered and it was Clara Bow's agent. Okay. He wanted to go for a swim. And my dad had one of the few pools around. And so he, he said, can you know, I bring Clara over for a swim? And my dad said, sure. So the next morning, my mom got up to clean the pool and <laughs> there were Clara Bow's faulties. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. I mean, you know, it was crazy. When um, my dad did, um, uh, I don't know how many people in your audience have seen 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Classic for sure. You know, and how James Mason uh, was Captain Nemo and he played the mm-hmm. organ. Yes. You know, and the, 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 the window would scroll open and he'd see the ocean floor as he'd play. Right. Well, that was my dad. Oh. And that was my dad's organ. And so James would come over to learn how to look like he was playing. Sure. Yeah, they had to copy him. And 
So he and my dad, because of his wonderful voice and my dad's, you know, wonderful organ, they they did some recordings of Edgar Allan Poe. Oh. They did the Telltale Heart. Awesome. And Adam L. Lee and a, several silent, I, you know, some of the um, classic Poe's. And um, in fact, a fan just found that the album for me. I didn't even know it was out on an album. I wow. had an old cassette tape from, you know, probably 60 years ago that I would play. <laughs> and uh, so, and then I found out on, I well, he was the musical director for Big Crosby and Rosemary mm-hmm. Clooney and Phil Harris and Doris Day, Judy Garland. Marlena Dietrich, I mean, I could just, you know, Dean Martin. Um, and I found out not, I mean, probably 10 years ago, maybe, on Facebook, that he died, my father died of a heart attack at 47 years and old. And he died very so young. Was, wow. Yeah, and the last thing he worked on, it was, he had worked like eight hours that day in our home, he had a by that time, he had moved, and he had a, a 2,000 pipe organ that was all set up for stereo recording, and there wasn't even stereo yet. I mean, he was just an amazing man, and he had worked like eight hours, I think, uh, according to this this article, on the music for the Sound of Music. Wow! And I didn't even know. I kept listening to that, like the the wedding scene when they they go into the church and the the big Mm -hmm. church organ and I thought boy that sounds like daddy (laughs) and sure enough and that yeah that was him well I found out in my research because I've been a fan well I'm a fan of Rosemary Clooney anyway Rosemary and, and Bing Crosby and and the thing that stood out to me in those little radio shows they did like 15 minutes or whatever is this organ playing and that was your dad yeah yeah I would help him tune the organ when I was a little girl. I would sit at the organ and, he, and I had to just hold one note down. Mm-hmm. He would be in the in the pipe chamber. Plus, we had a whole a big chamber that was just big leather bellows that pumped the air in, and, and that he would be he would be just tapping the reeds of these pipes, either higher or lower, to, to tune them all. Uh-huh. And it had. You know, he'd have to tune 1,200 to 2,000 pipes. Oh, my gosh. And, I was, and I'd hear him going, okay, next! <laughs> and press the next yeah, you know, I was wondering, because I heard you say that you used to be down in, in the organ chamber where the pipes were, and I guess your father had like a sunken floor or something way down deep, and I don't know how you can hear anything today. I mean, <laughs> to not make you deaf. Oh, that was the biggest thrill. He would, and I'd love to, I used to love to bring my fr- friends into the organ chamber, into mm-hmm. the pipe chamber, and we would be in there, and he would, blah, you know, just open up full, <laughs> full steam, and it was where you felt that you, I mean, you were almost part of the music. Yeah. It just it took over your whole body. It was just thrilling. It probably yeah, it was really just, something. That was very unusual. Probably just, <laughs> it was like an earthquake. I mean, it just reverbed through your whole oh, body. Yeah. yeah, it did. It did. And uh, you know what was the most fun for a kid? Yeah. On on the side of the organ, uh, the consoles, he had a box that he made with buttons. And it was every sound effect you could imagine. It was horses' hooves, mm. train whistles, uh, toilets flushing. It was... Um, you know, every bell and whistle, it was oogas and, and, you know, boat whistles, train whistles. It was every sound effect you could imagine. And so he could just press a button and get, you know, and add that to, while he was playing yeah. the organ. D- did he your, was a really fun guy. D- did your dad happen to know there was somebody else that reminded me a lot of your dad? Did he know Corla Pandit? Oh, I remember him. I don't know if he did. <laughs> I don't, but I do remember him. Yeah. And, and you know, Liberace lived down the street, but Uh-oh. he didn't play organ. <laughs> right. so, yeah. And I imagine there might have been some stories about that that maybe we couldn't tell. I don't know. <laughs> I, I was a little too young for that. I, yeah, I don't know those stories. Well, what an incredible family you come from. Uh, I was talking 
to you uh, about you to my my daughter who's the other host here tiffany's my daughter and she was trying to figure out who had more in their family the osmonds or the kings and and the king family (laughs) outnumbered the osmonds like you guys could take them in a basketball game a football game or or a boxing match i I mean and then i found our first show there were like 30 39 of us on the first show wow and then i we had to drown the ones that couldn't sing. You know, right. <laughs> <laughs> so how did it come about now? Your your mom's your mom was famous along with her other sisters. How did it come about that they created the King Cousins? I guess it was so they could have a more contemporary sound while your your mom did like kind of, kind of like the big band stuff. Yeah, well <laughs> so after the King family started and I started I I was <laughs> discovered when I was 14 mm-hmm. and uh, was given a screen test by Warner Brothers. And I went to, so I was acting be- way before the King family started. Mm. And um, Starting and, out with uh, Gary were, Cooper, that's pretty good. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was, of course, I didn't know who he was. I was too young. <laughs> and he was just an old coot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He was going duck hunting with <laughs> with um, Solidiano, who who did the screen test, and yeah. so he was in his jeans and his you know Pendleton flannel shirt, and he had scruff on his face, you know, beard and wire rim glasses, and and they walked him out of my interview, and uh, they expected me to swoon, mm. <laughs> and I just kind of looked at him, and, oh well, hello, Mr. Cooper, it's so nice to meet you. <laughs> I, I had no idea who he was. Because <laughs> I was a fourteen-year-old kid, right? You know? right. And, and you know that screen test wouldn't have went well if you called him an old coot. I mean, <laughs> that's, true. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Boy, I wish I I had known then what I know now. <laughs> but uh, but so I had. But we would go uh, in the summers. We would go with our mothers when they were singing at Harris Club or you know in Reno or Tahoe or Vegas or mm-hmm. wherever. And many times they would bring us up on stage with them. So we, you know, we were used to singing with them. And we would, they would be rehearsing, um, right, They all the cousins would be together playing, and the sisters were right there rehearsing and, and arranging new numbers and, you know, arguing about who got the hot notes. And um, we, so we kind of got their music in us by osmosis I think mm-hmm. uh, so when my mother uh, the, the, the King sisters were out asked to do a benefit for uh, uh, a church our church we wanted to have a new building mm-hmm. and mom said well you've done the King sisters before why don't we do the King sisters and their families mm-hmm. and so she put this show together i helped her sew all the costumes i you know i did half the choreography and we um we did the show and it was we had a standing ovation and then we did it for my aunt's church building fund in la and we got another standing ovation with a lot of entertainers in the audience and and then we did it my my grandfather was one of the first uh, student body presidents of Brigham Young Academy before it became a university. Wow. And he, he, they put the Y, the big, big Y on the hill um, that overlooks the campus. Mm. Uh, he did that. He was the first one to do that. And um, so, your, your uh, family is of the Mormon faith. They were very involved with the, uh, the university then. Oh, yes. Um, we, my family pushed hand carts across the plains mm. and uh you know in the 1800s and um i'm i'm digressing here i know no, you that, you, I, i'm fine. loving this just mm-hmm. keep going yeah but um my one of my one side uh was in denmark and heard the missionaries and wanted to join and and go to utah you, you they were just moving to utah mm-hmm. and they said uh well if if your one your oldest son would stay back and you know be a missionary in your country then we'll we promise you that nobody will be hurt on the way you'll all make it well there was a uh i don't know 12 or 14 he was young Mm -hmm. large 
and he was he played the fiddle and he brought the he brought the fiddle with him and so you know as the pioneers would camp he would he would fiddle and they would dance and sing by the fire and so my grandfather you know we all kind of come by it naturally i guess Mm -hmm. in the gene so my grandfather um was a frustrated you know, he was a musician. He had a he had a scholarship to the Chicago Conservatory of Music. Wow! But Grandma got pregnant, and she wanted to be in, with her mother in Colorado, so he had to give that up. And when my mom was like four, and there were uh, seven of them at that time, seven mm-hmm. kids. Grandpa taught them all, gave them instruments, taught them how to sing and dance, and they went on the road. Well, I think yeah, I'm. Just, I think I'm just going by the Osmonds, but like, if you're you're Mormon, you have to sing, don't you? I mean, it's, it's kind of <laughs> you do. Yeah, it's, it's in our souls. Yeah. Yeah. And so they, and that's how they earn their living. They just pass the hat. They do shows in the in the town, the next town, and the next town. Oh. And whenever you know September would roll around, they would uh, rent a house and and go to school, and then summer would come around, and they'd be back on the road. So the King sisters came from that, and then um, when my mother sold the King family show to, um, we did uh, the third show we did live show was for the, uh, I think, to help build Cougar Stadium mm-hmm. at BYU. Right. And uh, the film department kinescoped it then, and kept, people kept saying this needs to be on television. Yeah. So she sold it to ABC. So your your mom your night down from the from the from the kitchen one morning she was talking to ABC in New York and you know head of wow. programming and and she said yeah I was I think I've got something you'd like. So we can and we we can thank Yvonne King for starting this whole thing. Exactly, it was all yeah. her baby. Wow. And so we were in a sixty six. John Davidson oh, yeah. is going to take over the Craft uh, Music Hall from Perry Como for the summer. Mm-hmm. Called it the Craft Summer Music Hall. It was with George Carlin and Richie Pryor, Flip Wilson. Um, you know, it's just <laughs> all these first for all these guys. Mm-hmm. And they needed some girl singers. And they called us and said, we know you've got your young girls. You have some that could come over and sing on our show. And there were five of us available, so we went over there. We they, they called us the Five King Cousins, and we ended up as we were supposed to be a guest. We ended up doing the whole season. And um, after that, uh, um, my cousin Jamie wanted to go to college. The four of us really liked singing. We went on the road with George, with uh, John Davidson and George Carlin, and uh, you know, and so we, and we liked it so much. We you know started working, and then we we got signed by Capitol Records, and you know it was uh, it just kind of fluke, you know, a fluke thing happened. Well, you know, you mentioned about how your sisters would kind of discuss and or maybe squabble over arrangements what was it like for you working with your cousins because i know families fight and is it hard working with your family i have a hard time working with my daughter yeah, here sometimes no, sometimes we you have know. trouble <laughs> and, and, and there can be that whole family tension that you can't show the audience how does that work it, it i think we loved each other so much and and you know the squabbles would be would they go up and down, and and they would be long forgotten. I mean, quickly yeah. forgotten. Good. Um, and there were so many of us <laughs> that no one could be a star. You right. couldn't be a prima donna in that group because, you know, there was someone right there to take your place. Right. So, um, you know, we we all really were our best friends. Right. In fact, there was a funny article, and my cousin uh, Cam has it up in his wall in a frame and it says the the terrible secret you know that the king family wants to hide or something and you read you know it's a movie magazine and you read like four pages 
And the very last paragraph says, the real secret is that they really love each other. <laughs> and you know, it, it, it's true, because we don't we don't dwell on scandal on this show, but we will bring it up if they want to talk. There is nothing about you and your family. You guys were so squeaky clean, <laughs> which yeah. is a good thing. And after and after my three sons, I couldn't get arrested because I was so squeaky yeah. clean. I, was there well, any? As we as we go here, I, I'm also getting uh, questions from the listeners. Uh, this question actually is from somebody who's kind of a super fan of yours. Um, I'll, I'll give her a shout out real quick. This is from Denny Stewart. Um, and it kind of goes. Oh, Danny! Yeah. Tell her hi. Hi, Danny. <laughs> um, and it kind of goes in with talking about where, what Terry was mentioning as far as squabbles or family rivalry or whatever. So when the four King cousins stopped performing, was it a mutual decision? How how did you guys come about to decide that? Okay, we're 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 done now. You know, it was so far. It was so long ago. I don't even. I don't even remember um, our last gig. I know we got together in 2013, and we put out a, a CD, and we um, started doing concerts, and then we did that until, I guess, 2019, maybe, and uh, my cousin Carolyn decided she really was done. She didn't want mm -hmm. to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's not... <clears throat> we tried a ringer one time. We did. We hired a ringer, and we... She fit in. We adored her, but it, you know, it just... It... It's not the same. Well, no, it had to be, it, it, it had to be hard. It's like, here's my family and my fake cousin. <laughs> you know? It's like, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Well, do you yeah, think... She, do was you, a, she was wonderful, and she was a great singer. In fact, she'd been one of the original uh, Dean Martin Gold Diggers. Oh, oh. okay, yeah. Do you yeah, think that it... was great, but it just didn't, you know, you, the cohesiveness just wasn't there. And there is something about... Harmony. I noticed it with the Osmonds, yeah. right. with the Everly Brothers, yep. with the, you know, with us, there is there is just something about the the voices that blend because you're related yes yeah. it's, it's the whole you know, family the harmony sisters, thing, yeah. yes. the lennon sisters yeah but, you know it is it and the thing is the king sisters were more jazz oriented mm -hmm. um they and my mother always felt like they were they never made it because like the andrew sisters did because the andrew sisters had a more commercial sound because there were three and the King sisters always loved, like I say, they are, they'd argue about who got to sing the hot notes. They they had that jazz, that four part harmony. Mm -hmm. um, I, oh, I want to tell you one thing. I I'm hoping it's going to happen. Um, my cousin Cam, who was he was the one of the little kids that did the station breaks on the on the King family yes. show. Oh, oh by the way, I wanted to let you know. We'll be asking him about this too. Cam's coming on the radio show in a couple of weeks. Oh. Oh, you will love him. Yeah. He is fabulous. And he's, you know, he was the original Leonardo Teenage Mutant Ninja mm -hmm. Turtle and mm -hmm. among a thousand other voices. But um, he uh, said, I have done everything on my bucket list except one thing. And he said, I want to sing with my family again. Aww. And so a year before COVID, uh, we started rehearsing. Five of us, four girls in Cam. And we, he had our arranger, our musical director, take off every note from the King Sisters, our favorite uh, recordings of theirs. Wow, good. Not the, not the big band stuff, but mm -hmm. the, the stuff they did in, you know, when they were nominated for a Grammy, right. one of the first Grammys, um, mm. for Imagination. So once they, you know, they had this new sound and the... It was probably the 60s, late 50s, early 60s. And they, um, and it was real jazz. I mean, it, I mean, you know, really tight harmony. So we, it, there was one pass, we decided we would do a tribute to our mothers. Sure. And it was going to be a live show. He was going to have a live band. And we worked for a year. Oh. There were times where, there would be four bars, and it would take us a couple of hours to get those notes down because they were so tight, mm -hmm. the harmony. Right. 
And we so we had a date, we had a facility, we had the band, we had the you know everything ready to go, and then COVID hit. Yeah. Uh, wow. I know. So I am hoping, you know, hopefully the voices are holding out. I don't know. Um, because, you know, the King Sisters didn't sing into their 70s. <laughs> so, um, but uh, it, it was so much fun. And we realized how they made it look so easy, but how hard they worked. Right. Those notes and the, the, their, their, you know, they sang like one person. Yeah. In their, you know, the inflections and everything. They were... <laughs> They were amazing. Well, I, I see on, on your musicians. Facebook page that people really do remember them. And, and this this whole show thing of yours is great. And what would be even cooler is if there could be a King Sisters movie with y'all playing your moms. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we, we had thought about that, uh, like, years ago. Of course, we're all too old now to do it. Um, I mean, I you know, I, I wish we had really... We had someone to help us promote that and right. be able to do that when we were in our 30s and 40s, right. you know, it would have been great. But um, we we hope that we will be able to put this show on. In the, uh, you could talk to Cam about it because he's Absolutely. he's producing it. Very good. And uh, but it was and it was was done. We're going to do it with video and we're going to sing with them. You know, and it was really, it was going to be a really great show. I well, think. people are ready for that kind of music again. And and you said that your your mom and, and the sisters thought that they weren't quite as successful as they could have been. But I think that was a lot to do with the fact of, of the era and the time. Because, you know, uh, if they would have been, like, way back in the big band days, you know, that, that whole thing was kind of phasing out. And your your mother and, and your, your aunts were, like, the last of that. And, uh, yes. Yeah. But it's still very popular, and and I can imagine people get you guys confused with the Lennon sisters, right? Oh yeah, well they they thought we were on Lawrence Welk show. Right. <laughs> you know, and I said no. You know, we in fact uh, when Bing Crosby introduced our show for the first time, he said, and uh, they're on. Let's see, what do you say there? They're on right after Lawrence Welk pops his cork. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that's the way they introduced he introduced our show. Wow! So um, it uh, yeah we never were on Lawrence Welk, um, but we did have our own show for those of, of your listeners that don't know that, and we really were the first family right. on television. Right. I, I'm amazed, you know, with your whole musical thing that you you got into the acting. Well, I was going to say, I don't know how you were managing to juggle both because, I mean, y correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong, but you were not only a part of, you know, the the, the King family and the, and the show and then the King cousins, but at 19, you signed a contract with Warner Brothers, right? Yes, yes. But see, the family hadn't started uh, for three more years. I was 21 when the family started. Okay. So I was doing... In fact, I did uh, Hawaiian Eye, which is the first show ever shot in Hawaii. Um, we did the complete show there. It was with, in fact, my screen test for that was with Troy Donahue, who had just done a summer place and Parish. Oh and, my gosh! You know, he was he, he was like, and we had to do a romantic scene, but it was in a restaurant, and but it was a very romantic thing, and that was my screen test. Wow! And uh, I had never sung by myself. I had to sing, I had to dance, I had to, <laughs> it was, and three weeks later I was in Hawaii. And you know, I never really so, thought of, of you, but I, I guess my mind is, is seen because I didn't see the series, although I certainly could have because I'm old enough to have seen it, that, that you were in Hollywood's eyes a kind of a Connie Stevens. Well, I took her place. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and, and you know what's funny? They thought I reminded them of a young Doris Day, really, which was very flattering. Yeah, think, that's not bad. You know, my dad, my dad worked with her a lot, and and I I thought I wanted to be Doris Day, you know, when I grew up. Um, but they, and I had this sunny personality, so my 
character's name on Hawaiian Eye was Sunny Day. Yeah. Right. <laughs> because of Doris Day. And you could have had so a sister by the name of Cloudy Night, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, really? A little just the opposite side of the coin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so after I did, uh, I did Hawaiian Eye. I went on to do like a Lucy show and My Three Sons and things like that. And then the family went professional. Yeah. Right. So I kind of gave up the acting. A- except you started. wound up landing in in the the show that kind of typecast you in a way, and that is we certainly got to talk about my three sons. I mean that was a big <laughs> thing for you. Oh, it was. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I I'm in the middle of doing the King family show. I had done three my three sons, and as a featured player. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you were kind of like and just the girl, and you weren't a regular yet. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. I played different, uh, completely different types. I was a I was a beatnik in one. I was a tomboy in one and and uh, I was a girlfriend in the other mm-hmm. and um, I got a call one night after dinner from Ed Hartman of show's producer and he said um, why haven't we seen you <laughs> <He> said, <laughs> what do you mean and he said well we've been looking for an actress to play the wife of, of Robbie and you haven't come in for the interview and I said well i I've been a little busy right. you know, <laughs> learning, learning 16 songs a week with choreography um, and you know our our, uh, our director and choreographer did uh, Mary Poppins and uh, Sound of Music and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang right. and, wow. you know we had the best and of course Bob Mackey did our <clears> costumes <throat> that was a whole other thing and that was his first show on his own and I, I, he said, well, we, we'd like to see you. And, you know, I don't know if this is true. This is what they told me, that they had tested 2,000 girls, or not tested, but interviewed 2,000 girls, and they had tested like 20. Wow. And so I, they said, would you come in? I said, well, okay, <laughs> sure. And I went in, and uh, I, uh, Fred DeCorda, before he went on to do Johnny Carson was the director Mm -hmm. I spent like 40 minutes with him and you never do that I mean an interview is you know three to five minutes long right he must have liked you about how important I think they'd already chosen me yeah um, do for from the last uh, show I had done where I played a girlfriend of his of Robbie's um, but he kept saying talked about how important her uh, the, the audience, you know, in those days, didn't like a new character coming in. Right. This was an all-male show, right. right? And how important it was that they liked me, that they won, you know, that they I endeared myself to them. And they said, he said, you can't, you can't, you have to be sweet, but not too sweet. You have to be feisty, but not bitchy. You have to be, you know, and and then I went in and talked to the producer for another 20 or minutes or so and then they sent me into another room and there was Fred McMurray and June his wife mm-hmm. I, didn't, I, I didn't another, know Fred's uh, wife was so involved in the show that, that she was right there huh? well they were in the casting hmm. and apparently especially I guess because I was the first female yeah. right. to actually join the show although Meredith McRae had played a girlfriend you know she she was a, like a semi-regular, but this was, you know, I'm joining the show, and so it was really important to them. And I got along famously with them, and then I went to the, um, I left with the side, to, I thought I was going to screen test, and I left with the script and was waiting for the elevator, and the uh, casting director came running after me and said, wait a minute, you didn't sign the contract. What? And I said, what? I didn't screen <laughs> test. What are you talking about? <laughs> and she said, yeah, you got it. We start in a week and a half. Wow. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even have an agent. I, I've never, I never had an agent because I, I, and I, which was really dumb, but I didn't know anything about the business. I knew about, I could act yeah, mm-hmm. and I could, you know, do all that, but I didn't know, you know, I didn't know the business side at all. Well, no. I, I can I, mean, I, I had I had uh, opened for Rowan and Martin in Australia, 
I opened for Bob Hope in Alaska, you know, as a single, as a solo. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, you know, I could do that stuff, but I, you know, I had been kind of coddled in my family. I mean, you know, nestled in there, and suddenly I'm now, I'm doing the King family, I'm doing My Three Sons, I'm doing The Cousins, I'm doing game shows, I'm doing talk shows. There was a time where I was on television every single night of the week. Wow. And you know, it was really important that, that Fred McMurray liked you. Of course, it played, wound up being your father in the show when you married his son in the show. But it, it's a good thing Don Grady, and, and he certainly got to like you later on. We'll talk about that too. But <laughs> but if Don Grady would have been there, you wouldn't have been casted because Don didn't think you were right. Exactly. No, he really didn't. He, he I remember Ronnie Troop joined the show later as Tip's wife. Right. And that kind of that kind of who he thought I should look like. Oh, okay. He, you know, here I, he like, you know, kind of long, kind of surfer girl. Yeah. Look, and here I am, you know, round and bouncy. <laughs> <laughs> certainly, not, certainly not the surfer, the surfer type at all. Of course, I think he realized that I was the right character. Now, you're both him. professionals for sure, but did I hear that it bothered you, uh, and it bothered him, too, because you guys felt kind of awkward in, like, your love scenes because <laughs> you knew that he didn't really care for you being part of the show and it didn't kind of well, interfere? no, I did not know that. Ah. I did not know that. Thank goodness I oh. didn't know that. <laughs> he actually told me that two years later at when after we had actually started dating. He admitted um, it? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, he did. He did. And he said, I really, he said, I just didn't think you were right. <laughs> he said, boy, was I wrong. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was, and we had to do, the very first week, we had to do all of the make-out scenes, Uh-oh. all of the falling in love. And there was a, we, you know, kept bumping noses, and, you know, it was just awkward. And <laughs> I'm a, the court of a, said, cut, cut. Okay, look, and he told everybody to take five. And he came over to us and he said, "Look, <laughs> this isn't working. <laughs> you gotta, you know, you gotta act like you like each other." And you know, <laughs> and he said, "So this is what I want you to do. I want you to go off to the side, you know, of the stage and practice kissing." And I mean, we actually had to work at it. Wow, it was funny. Well, it it, was, it, yeah. it must have worked. Because uh, I, I guess you guys were uh, very much in love for a long time. There were like eight years. For yeah. real, in real life. Yeah, yeah, on and off. And you know, the first time he wanted asked me to marry him, and I wasn't ready. And then, you know, years later, I oh, he got married in between, and we uh, we did one of the first reunion shows we did with. Partridge family, which I don't quite understand, because we weren't even on the same network. Right. But um, and Don and I hadn't seen each other in a like he had been married maybe ten months or something like that, mm-hmm. and and we looked at each other and went, "Okay, this is." He said, "I really made a mistake." Wow, well, that's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really said, nice. I'll call to hear. you when I, he said, "I'll call you when I'm free." <laughs> You know, and speaking he, as a fan, that would have been so cool if you guys would have gotten married, you know? because It would have. Yeah. It would have. And I, so the next time, uh, we started going out again and uh, still very much in love. And I decided I want to marry him now. And he, he decided he wanted to try his hand at Broadway. Mm-hmm. And so he was going to move to New York. And I... I wasn't ready to move to New York. Yeah. And uh, I was still, you know, working in town. And he said, I said, well, I'll tell you what. I will come to New York with you as your wife. And he said, no, come to New York as my friend. Oh. And I said, I can't. And I said, I can't do that. Yeah. Mm. And uh, because I really did not believe, you know, you did that until you were married. I mean, I'm, I'm old-fashioned, but... No, I couldn't, the thought of, you know, I wouldn't live with someone unmarried. Yeah. Right. So, uh, and 
And two weeks later, I got a call from Beverly Garland's stepson. <laughs> and he said, hey, you want to have lunch? <laughs> and six months later, we were married. And Beverly Garland, who was your TV mom, because she married Fred McMurray, wound up being your real-life stepmother. That's crazy. <laughs> That's totally crazy. Yep. My, my real-life stepmother-in-law, like she was at my stepmother-in-law and my three sons. Yeah. And I adored, I just adored her. She was great. Oh, she my God, awesome. what a Hollywood legend. I mean, Fred McMurray was, but Beverly Garland, and, and she's yeah. such a hook. She did so many of those great B-movie Roger Corman things, you know, where she's, like, fighting oh, exactly. a giant vegetable. And she loved talking about that. <laughs> she did. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. She was so much fun. And, you know, she was a, she was a good she was, you know, I had this tough, broad exterior and this really gooey marshmallow inside. Yeah. She would, um, you could show up at her house un unannounced, just show up. She would drop everything she was doing and make herself a cup of coffee and myself a lemonade or something. And I, and we, she would just say, okay, talk to me. And we would just, you know, she would drop everything. She was like, like I was the most important person in the world for that minute, you know. Right. She was amazing. Well, I'm, I'm glad things turned out for you. That you found love. I know you had love with Don, but it wasn't really meant to be. And and you had kids and grandkids, and that's who you're making cookies for. I mean, wow. Now, I wanted exactly. to tell I wanted to tell you though, Tina. I have to embarrass my father for a second because we were talking the other night because I was doing research for the show. And I said, oh, yeah, no, yo, I, I read that, that Tina and Don really had a, a thing in real life. <laughs> and, and, and Terry was like, oh, my gosh. And I was like, yeah, I mean, you know, Don was a good-looking boy, but I, you know, I was like, I guess they never got married. And Terry goes, hell, I would have married Don Grady. <laughs> <laughs> really? I was like, yeah. <laughs> uh, did, yeah. Did you ever I'm see... Great, there's an old clip on, there's an old clip on YouTube where Don Grady was, was a teen idol kind of singing guy on, on Dick Clark's show. Do you ever see that? On Bandstand. At the Yellow Balloon. Yeah, he had a band called the Yellow Balloon. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I wanted yeah, to... Yeah, he was quite a musician. I wanted to ask you, though, uh, kind of what the personalities were like in real life. Uh, on on my three cents, specifically talking about Fred McMurray. Of course, everybody's heard about how Fred, you know, had his own shooting schedule. I'm sure that was probably very difficult on everybody else. But because of that, and because of the fact that he was a big movie star and he was kind of at, in charge, a lot of people have gotten the opinion or thought that he was stern and super hard to deal with. We heard from Don Lynn, also uh, Stanley and Barry, who we had on the show. That, no, he was very much a pussycat. What was your experience with Fred? I guess he really liked you. He, he did. And, I mean, I got the biggest bouquet of flowers my first day. And and he he was, and after Don and I broke up, um, you know, the, the first time, uh, I would see him at functions, and he would say, have you found someone yet? Are you in love? I Aww. need you. I want you to get married. I, you know, he was just. I think he was very, very shy and yeah. very introverted. When we would be on the set and someone would walk in, the newspaper would go up. Yeah. Not because he was, he was stuck up. It was because he didn't know what to say. Yeah. I, I take it you, you and know, Don was, were dating during the show. Since Fred was so much in charge yeah. of that show, was he worried that you, you guys would interfere no, with the show? No, he loved it. No, he loved it. Oh, he loved it. Oh, yeah. He was tickled to death for us. Well, there wasn't yeah. any trouble kissing was, after that, so. No. <laughs> oh, no. In fact, there were, well, the funny thing is, of course, this is, this is before we were, before we had fallen in love, we, when we got back from our honeymoon and moved into you know, the, the house, the right. household, um, they had twin beds for us. And Don just said, wait a minute, this is, this is 1967, there's no way, you know, right. we're going to be sleeping in twin beds. I think, I don't know if we were the first people on television to have a big bed or not, but we were one of the first. I think so, and yeah. He, he refused, he said, I'm not going to do it. Mm. And they got us the biggest bed I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and, but the deal was, 
we could talk in bed. We could, you know, be in bed. We could talk and look face each other while we're talking. But we had to, at the end of a scene, we had to turn away and roll over. Mm. We couldn't be facing each other at the end of a scene. And the last show that the court of it did with us, that, and by that time, you know, we were crazy. We were we wanted to stay in bed, but we wanted yeah. right, right. Um, we he said, "I'm going to try something." He said, "I don't know if I'll get in trouble, but I'm going to do it." And he had us end the scene with a kiss and facing each other, and that was really taboo. Right. That's yeah, just crazy. Right? We we were nuts back in those days to think that. Okay, well, you know, it's got to be squeaky clean. and, and we got to think about it. Lucy and Ricky slept in separate beds, yet they had yeah. a child. How did yeah, that work? Like, how did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> but, you you know, you think well, about it. they did it. in movies. Yeah. In movies, they all slept in separate beds. Exactly. You know? right. They and didn't you, stay in the separate beds. They started out. <laughs> it, it's so weird. You really owe a lot to Disney. Because Fred McMurray came from Disney. Don Grady came from Disney. You just, there's that thing. I don't know what it is. Yes, yes that's true. Wow. Well, and Fred, you know, a funny, I love this story, is, um, you know, because he had played some pretty good heavy. Yeah. Fred had. And he, um, he was asked to do The Apartment with Jack Lemmon. Right. And he was supposed to be, you know, he had to play the heavy in that. And uh, he had already done Flubber and, you know, the Shaggy Dog mm-hmm. and My Three Sons. And so he had become a family, uh, you know, celebrity name right. for family. And uh, he does the apartment. And he took, he and June had taken his, the twin daughters to, oh no, they weren't twins. Were they twins? Oh, anyway, um, the two girls mm-hmm. to Disneyland. And um, this lady took her child and said, okay, you stay right there and don't move. And she walked up to Fred and she said, Mr. McMurray, I took my child to see the apartment because you were in it. Mm. And she hauled off with her purse and belted him. <laughs> oh. And said, I will never see another one of your movies. And walked away, stormed away. He was just shocked. And wow. he realized he realized that uh, they, you know, he couldn't do that anymore. Right. Yeah, he had but become he like Ozzy and Harry. had a niche. Yeah, he had a niche that he had to stick with. And that was the family. And, and, and I'm know. sure it bothered him because you had said in an interview that he was very concerned that he would break any family morals or say something that people would get upset about, that he really kept his mind in that family type of program. Oh, yeah. And Don Federson did too, our, our executive producer. That was, and and they would sit. Uh, he and 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 De Cordoba would take the script apart every morning. They would discuss, you know, if there was anything that wasn't right or that they needed to adjust to make mm-hmm. sure that it was that it stayed moral and right. it stayed, you know, even though the world around us was <laughs> going crazy. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm sure it was a bold, bold thing to know that Katie had triplets because, I mean, obviously you guys had gotten together at some time, you know, in, in your well, TV life. When they told me, I, because this is way before fertility drugs. Yeah. And nobody had triplets. I mean, that was nobody. rare. <laughs> and they told me, you know, I was going to have triplets. And I, I said, you're crazy. <laughs> nobody will buy that. Because. You know, it was a rare thing for a woman to have triplets. And, um, of course, that, I think we were number one in the Nielsen's that show. Yeah. And you, wound, we, up, you wound up on triplets. you wound up on TV Guide. That's a big thing, to be on TV Guide. Yeah. 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 It, was, it was great. And I can't believe your, your TV children, your triplets, are in their 50s now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Wow. Yeah, I know. This, uh, my mother used to say, I'm not growing any older, but my children keep nudging me into the grave. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so before we before we end this, though, I, I had to ask you uh, another question from the audience. Are you still writing your book? Uh, there, you were working oh, on a book? <laughs> All right. 
Debbie and Trish, if you're listening, <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. I, I, my big problem is I, I have trouble writing a grocery list. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's not an easy thing. I also have a memory like an elephant. I remember so many details and trying to um, decide what is really interesting and pertinent and get rid of all the, you know, every detail that I can remember. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I am halfway through. I hope I get, I have to do this before I'll, before I die and all my fans die. <laughs> No, I mean, gotta, gotta get this. Well, you've got to. Well, you know, there's there's brand new generations of the fans because Absolutely. my three sons has been in syndication and probably will be for eternity. I grew up. I'm Terry's daughter, so I'm one generation down, and I grew up watching my three I, sons. I, I think it's still on. Uh, oh, by the way, I, I think it's still on MeTV. But I love the promo for MeTV you did with Barry and Stanley. Oh, isn't that fun? Yeah. Except yeah. It, it was so you know sad when you come in and you go, have you seen Robbie? Because, you know, you think about Don passing. and Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was so, so sad. And, and to think that he, you know, he was a health nut. Yeah. He was always concerned about, you know, his, you know, he, he was, he exercised, he dieted, he was, he was one, never smoked, you know, never did anything to get cancer and just. Cancer is not selective at all. No, right. and, and that's why I eat the crap, because I say <laughs> the health nuts, they, they pass away too, so it really doesn't, you might as well enjoy yourself, okay? Just, that's the way, hey, that's the way I feel. That's right, that's exactly. It, right? Absolutely. Well, we, I just feel, I want to be, I want to be the healthiest person when I die. Well, we want to mention before we say goodbye here. I want to be all you just when I die. Right. Oh, absolutely. We want to mention that your fan base on, on Facebook, and, and we'll tell people where your Facebook page is, but uh, you also do the autographed uh, signing of photos, and you do, don't you do like video messages for people? Like, like what's that, Cameo or whatever that service? Was it you with them? or? No, I'm doing it on my own. Okay, well that's and even better. Go to my web. Yeah, go to my website, and it's I'll I'll talk to you. I'll do a video. I'll do an audio. I'll do whatever. Well, I and, think uh, the next thing should be. I love talking to my fans. I think the next thing should be an official line of Tina Cole cookies. Oh, I, yes. I, can, I would buy that. <laughs> hey, I've got I've got some good recipes. Let me tell you. <laughs> well, I, I was telling Tiffany, it's a good thing your your mom and dad didn't name you Nat, because then you could be Nat King Cole. <laughs> Because you got the king Listen. name, you got the Cole name, but I, I love your we family. We used to get Nat mail. Oh, really? really? <laughs> oh, yeah. and, and you know, my dad was Nat Pianist. Yeah. You know, for after Nat mm-hmm. got uh, playing for himself, you know, with his trio, mm-hmm. my dad took over as his pianist. Oh. Wow, fantastic. God, what yeah, a history. So uh, Nat's been, uh, <laughs> yeah, we've gotten mixed up a lot. Wow. <laughs> Well, Tina, I want to thank you so much for spending some time with us this weekend. The, the stories you have are amazing. Please finish the well, book. Well, based, based on the interview, yes. you gave a great interview, and, and you're a great talker. You tell great story. Your book's going to be incredible. Well, I I hope so. I promise, I promise all my fans I will get it out. As soon as I can. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we encourage everybody to head over to Tina's website, tinayycole.com, and you can find her on Facebook just by looking up Tina Cole. And, uh, Tina, it has been an honor to chat with you. Thank you so much for spending the time with us this weekend. Well, I appreciate it. You two are really fun. Father and daughter, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. (laughs) And I use... That is so cool. I used to think all the really cute girls were mean, and you totally dispelled that rumor because you're cute and you're mean. I mean, you're cute and you're nice, well, not thank mean. Thank you, my dear. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you again, thank you Tina. so much. It's been a fun, a fun hour. Absolutely. Thank you again, and have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you. I will. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cross those cookies. There yep. you go. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye. <laughs>